everybody. Uh, we are the Ameribee Junkies. <laughs> Uh, we've been gone for a few weeks, you know, holidays and holidays and all that jazz. Uh, but we're back, of course. Uh, to my top, to my top left, we have Demon Engine, <laughs> and of course, to my top right, we have Queen Neek. Hey y'all! You already know I've missed you guys. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram at queenneck.art. <laughs> And of course, I'm Corey Salter Tree Floyd. Uh, right, right now we're coming back with a we're coming back with a good old recap of the year that was. But first, just a few small tidbits about things you might have missed. Uh, of course, we've uh, we've lost two very prominent folks in entertainment: uh, John Madden, uh, football 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 coach, guru, Hall of Famer, and of course that one video game that everyone plays over at your cousin's house. Listen, I'm just keeping it real. R.I.P. but like... Am I lying? You're not. You're not. It's their staple. Yeah, I'm like, like, I'm like, listen, a lot of people be like, there's always debates on who's invited to the cookout. John Madden is already in the basement with your cousins talking trash. <laughs> like, like he was already there. I'm Man. not gonna hold y'all. Um, I wrong. feel like I'm too young for this conversation. How you can't be like I'm about to say there's been a Madden game for every year you've been alive. So was he the creator of the game or no? He was the coach, but he he was he was the name that he was the guy that the, he. He was the brand, pretty much. Oh, it was so they everything. named it after him. Yep, and and he was got getting you. them checks. Okay, got you, got you, got you, got you. Okay, because I was like very confused. Mm. And of course, uh, and of course, recently we also lost Betty White at the age of ninety nine, just two weeks shy of turning a hundred. Classic Betty, classic Betty, for her to go out on the last day of the year. That's very Betty esque, you know. Yeah. Now the funny thing is, um, a lot of folks have always questioned why Betty White is held in such high regard, and always like to bring up one very uh, one very big moment. Um, in 1954, Betty White had her own television show. She was actually one of the first women to have her own television show, and her television block actually consisted between two to three hours on a daily basis. Um, on that show, she actually had a she would have a lot of a lot of guests and other actors, and one was a black guy named Arthur Duncan, who would uh, who would tap dance as well as uh, um, sit down and talk to her and do sketch comedy with her. And when the show became uh, syndicated and started opening uh, opening up down south, of course, a lot of folks that on the Confederate side of things didn't wasn't too fond of having a black guy on their TV screen with Betty White. Of course, the studio executives stepped up to Betty White, and they were like, "Hey, listen, uh, you might have to get rid of him." Oh, she's like, "Oh no, I'm not." I'm like, "You guys need to." I'm sorry, you guys just gonna have to live with that. And eventually, it literally costed her her show, and she was not apologetic about it. So, see, it seems like she's been a soldier since day one, as well as being a very funny, coy personality. Who, who made sure she evolved with the times all the way up to the 21st century. She will be missed. R.I.P. Betty, we love you. Mm. Uh, on, the lighter, on the lighter side of things, apparently when Logan Paul spent, uh, spent $3.5 million on Pokemon cards, there's a 95% chance that they are actually fake. Ah, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to call that a W. Uh, apparent, uh, apparently the guy who, who sold him the cards has recently been arrested by the FBI for selling fake collector's cards, Pokemon cards being one of them. So it looks like the cards in, uh, that Jake Paul sold, uh, bought off him might actually be fake. Uh, Larry, us. Uh, 
How you feel about that? Wait, I'm sorry. I I missed it a little bit. Uh, Jake Paul. Uh, the Jake Paul spent uh 3.4 million dollars on Pokemon cards that oh that were fake. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I. Well, I don't feel bad. Yeah, ain't my money. Yeah. Oh no, ain't no feeling bad over here. It's nothing but ha 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 ha. I mean, that's what he get for being an asshole anyway. Basically. <laughs> More that's just karma every day bro like you can't feel bad at the scammer for scamming an asshole you just don't you really can't you really can't <laughs> you really can't uh also uh in other news uh over at complex uh complex.com uh matt matt rosa aka the real soups he got himself in a little bit of trouble with twitter he made a post uh, the other day talking about America Chavez, the uh, the Marvel character, and how she's going to be revealed in the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which you might see a saw a small clip of her in the current teaser trailer out. Uh, in the post, he was saying how this will be the first Hispanic uh, character in the MCU, and Twitter Twitter came in with the corrections so swift and so fast because ironically the first hispanic character to be introduced just happened recently on the hawkeye series on disney plus which would be the character of echo when he was given a chance to back up and correct himself he decided to double down because despite the name of america chavez she is actually from a dimension where there is no race or nationalities she just looks the way she looks period Interesting. Yes, because America Chavez is from a area is from a dimension called Utopia, where it's actually all women, and the two women literally can choose to bring life into the world, and bam, they have a child. I didn't write it; I just accept it. Another uh, last bit of last tidbit of Marvel news: uh, there's going to be a new comic book series that talks about Kang the Conqueror called Timeless. And the one thing I do know about this series, it is going to reveal a storm that is also the Black Panther and the Queen of Wakanda. Uh, I look forward to when these uh, when these issues hit the show. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, we'll be, uh, I'm not sure if we have, we, we have it queued up properly, but We'll be right back and talk about the year that was. Let's go. We're, uh, about to say we're in, uh, we're just into 2022, but let's talk about a few things that went down in 2021, be it be it geeky or be it just plain old freaky. Uh, I guess it'd be easier to start off last year. Last year, on the sixth, this really weird thing happened. Uh, I'm gonna call it the day they fucked around and found out. And it's one of those things where, of course, normally we don't get too uh, we don't get too political I'm here. But it I'm would be call it what it is: America experience fucking domestic terrorism on a scale I've never seen before. Yeah, somehow. Somehow things got really weird outside. Somewhere between beer, Mountain Dew, and Call of Duty. That's what happened at uh in Washington, DC. Um pretty much it was a pretty much it was a travesty and a shit show within its own within its all within its own rights. Um I personally find it sad yet hilarious because somehow the whole concept of um Blue Lives Matter just went right out the door. But my personal favorite highlight of it was when this uh, this one woman who apparently also served in the armed forces honestly thought that the Secret Service wasn't going to shoot her for trying to break into Congress. R.I.P. To fuck around is human. To find out. Now that's divine. 
I mean, that shit is just that shit is just a little too wild for me. I can't. a little too wild for me. Like the fuck? Where did it? Where? What was the reason? What? Mm mm. I mean, I, I I had nothing to do with that, man. I had nothing to do with that. Oh. <laughs> America. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker day now. My bad, y'all. I, uh, I had to, like, there's something wrong with my phone. So I'll probably be switching devices when I get home. It's not a problem, Queen. Not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. We were just talking about how one of the first things that happened in 2021 was the uh, insurrection. (laughs) What will happen next? I feel like... You know how there's certain like sci-fi stories where they're like aliens that look at Earth like it's a game show. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm feeling like right now. What's going to happen next? Each year is just a long ass season of the show. Speaking of shows, uh, 2021 was definitely a big year for Marvel on television. Facts. Uh, Jess, in 2020, in 2021, we had WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, and Hawkeye. And each, each show was, was absolutely excellent in their own right. And of course, and of course, to see where it all goes in the long run, just it's just only gonna raise more questions. Um, out of out of all those out of all those shows, which one? Uh, how would you put your how would you put your level of likability? Your your first, second, third, fourth. Uh. Loki has to be a fir- be be first, gets first place flies. I was like, it was just good. Got a little bit of weird, really narcissistic. Fell in love with a version of himself, but I understand that. I'm not narcissistic, but people who are shitty, and I'd rather just date my shitty self. <laughs> Interesting way to look into that. To uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Captain America and mm. the Winter Soldier. Okay. Hmm. Hawkeye was nice. Like it was actually really good. It was it, it was nice. And WandaVision was good, but it terrified me. Oh, okay. Uh, cause I, cause I'm kind, I'm kind of shocked, cause my first. My first hit is WandaVision. Because uh, w- one, it was just such a mysterious oddity uh, uh, at that had to unravel with e- uh, as the episodes went on, and then and then at the at the end of it, you kind of had to go back and really look. Mhm. But it was it was it was good. It was good. But the reason it terrified me, the thing for Marvel World isn't too much different than our world. Essentially. Aside from all the heroes, magical shit, because we, we don't got that, but the way that the history plays out is relatively the same. Mm. My thoughts of some random, just like when it comes to Superman, some random mentally unstable well, white woman with reality warping powers terrifies the shit out of me. It's my history as a black man. Yes, I get it. But uh, 
but I, I'm, I'm, but after that, I would actually like to put uh, Loki at part at, at second place at, because it, I, I enjoyed its end result a bit more than I did Falcon and Winter Soldier, and I like I like Captain America and the Winter Soldier, but I had to admit that speech at the end totally kind of pissed me off. It just turned into a really weird PSA. Say your prayers, eat your vitamins. Uh, uh, that that ended kind of I don't know. It, uh, oh, hold on, hold on. I gotta move back to this side. I'm blocking Shenmue. <laughs> kind of just makes me think. Just kind of just it's one of those times where I kind of wish that the little kid showed back up and shot everybody. Pretty much. I would have been fine with that. I would have been fine with that. But oh, uh, and I Hawkeye, Hawkeye is just stuck in fourth place. It's not a bad show. I actually think it. I actually really enjoyed it because it was the most human show. Yeah, it was the most. It was it, it was down to earth. There was no powers. Shit, Semi relatable. About to say he was one of the first people after a fight. You saw this nigga grabbing ice. Band aids. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we forgot these dudes either got some enhancements or they're not human. He just out here, just just one hundred percent natural earthling. <laughs> and on top of that, <laughs> and on top of that, now he's like he he's pretty much a he's deaf. Yep. And yo, all right here and yo. Tell me if you remember this. Sorry, y'all. Remember in Spider-Man No Way Home in the first scene where he's like web slinging away with MJ? Mm-hmm. Did you notice that one of the one of the signs in Times Square was Rogers the musical? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> God, that was so cringy. Yo, but the but the sad part is we I could I could see that being a thing. And at the same time, I feel like it was them mocking Spider-Man uh a uh, 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 Spider-Man what was it called? Alone in the Dark or something. It was a really bad it was a really bad attempt at putting Spider-Man on Broadway. It ended up costing way too much money. It was it was absurd. So many different actors got hurt playing Spider Man. Like no, because like in the show they were actually web slinging into the crowd. It was it was such a thing, but anyway. <laughs> But anyway. Why? <laughs> Why? Uh, what else do we have happen in 2021? Oh, man. Well, a little game. Uh, there was one. There was a game that came out that was uh, that was delayed. And uh, but it finally came out and um, things were not what it was supposed to be. Talking okay. about Cyberpunk 2077. Fucking shit show. Fucking shit show. And I mean, apparently it wasn't that much of an issue if you had PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X or a, or a gaming PC. But if you were anyone else, which at the time, because, you know, those systems were finite, a lot of people were pissed. And the devs, yo, the devs, the devs flat out said, we told them it was not going to be ready. We told them. This is not on us. They wanted us to change the game 
all around a year ago. And it's and it's and and it's real and it's and it's sad to say because it's like it's this is nothing new in the gaming world, and it's like the devs say one thing, but the suits say another, and at the end of the day, the devs get screwed over and us the consumer get screwed over. I mean, hell, you have Battlefield 2042 out right now. And it's an absolute shit show. Glitches and bugs galore. At least CD Projekt Red had the common decency of offering people refunds. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely... I never got mine. But they definitely was like, hey, we need, we, if I, here, here's your money back. And I can and at that, least expect that. And... and and now that they let the devs do what they're do what they're doing, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful game. The mm-hmm. update like the updates is absolutely excellent, and it feels like it's up to that CD Project Red standard that we've all grown to love. Like maybe I should have just let these motherfuckers do it uh, do it the way they were supposed to do. But you know what the ironic thing is. You know what the mm. funny part is? Well, this was still not the worst gaming release of 2021. It's like that that's the crazy though. That's that's the that's the craziest part to me. Like you would think this would be the worst, but it's not. Ironically, it goes to Rockstar. <laughs> oh my god, that god awful fucking remake. Like oh everything. yes, ah uh, yes, the 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 re, the remade trilogy, which is absolutely horrible. Hey queen, <laughs> hey queen. Hey y'all, I'm sorry y'all. I am having technical difficulties today. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I, I'm gonna be silent, unfortunately, because I can't really hear you guys. That's okay. Well, we're talking about technical difficulties over here on the video game plane. Somehow, yeah. somehow they took. They wanted to redo the Grand Theft Auto trilogy. They hired this company, that pretty much made an algorithm, that would redo and remap everything. But did zero testing on it. It looks okay. It plays horrible. The physics are all are all over the place. When it rains, it looks so weird. And on top of that, you can't even put in the codes anymore. Like, what's the point? Well, you guys got to take the time to remake that shit yourselves. And it's like, it's like, bro. And, and what made it worse is. They took down the previous version of the game off the marketplace. So it's not even like you can go back and buy that version that does work. Oh, they still going to have they still going to have mofo sitting here paying uh giving whole paychecks towards fucking shark cards though. Yeah, I'm good. Give us six. I don't care about five being on the next gen. Give us six. Yo, that's... <laughs> I just, really don't care. Because it's just like, you know what else is coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X? What? Grand Theft Auto Five. What? Like, give us six. Five has made enough money off of online loan. You just made six already, and it's some fucking bullshit. I'm still waiting on Sims Five. Yo, how about that? Sims Five. That's even worse. Didn't they show? (laughs) Didn't they show like a crazy little trailer for that? What two years ago? I think that. 
think that might have been fan made, but I can't remember. I really, really no, it was really legit. It to, was from uh, EA. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They did say that because on Twitter they was like, "Is y'all, is y'all playing? Like, is this for April Fools or y'all, y'all serious? Y'all like that?" Well, well, you know when it's EA, no matter what, it's always April Fools. April Fools of microtransactions. Thirty-nine dollars for what Four now? Forty. For fucking Sims 4 and all of all the expansion, all the shit. The expansion oh. packs are like forty dollars each. Yeah. Lord. The expansion packs are forty dollars each, and they uh and and like any of the other stuff. Now here's the thing though, they need to allow mods on console. They need to stop playing, but you know that's where they're making most of their money for those who are using console. Hmm. Because from what I understand, the mod community you know, anybody is like... who has a computer... No, go ahead. The mod community has been doing its thing. Uh, shoot. Yo, I'm here for all the shoot. black modders that are making mods for black people playing The Sims. Like, I'm here for all these hairstyles and the locks the you know the curly hair and all of that i'm so here for it they got that 4c mod they, they got, got black people that mod. actually look like black people did you say foreskin mod i can't 4c oh all right yeah 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 they do so she said foreskin i was about to be like yo why Corey? why Jeez. <laughs> <gasps> Why would I go to such a place? <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It just sounds like something you would do though. I don't think I ever want to be that up close in the Sims life to yeah. see that. <laughs> I don't want to be that up close in any random person's life. But, but wait, wait, no or... no lie though, there is a mod where you can actually get rid of the I guess the pixelated, you know, censorship on it. Mm -hmm. But you can't like for for future reference for anybody who, who has used those mods, you cannot stream with those mods turned on. You gotta you gotta pull those out of your mod folder when it comes to playing online. You cannot have those. Of like, course, they would have know that. Where the mod is, you know how many mods? um they they have a mod like that mod in particular also can um allow you like when they doing the woohoo they ain't under the covers shorty riding mm -hmm. like a european racist okay kind of they also have that. stripper they also have the stripper um uh uh like it's almost like grand theft auto uh profession like it's like the stripper like hooker profession or whatever you can do either <laughs> or it's it's very interesting. It really is, and you can also have them do drugs. You know, doing cocaine and all kinds of things. You gotta watch because Sims is the game YouTube where you can play his Sims Four play, play God hilarious. with your friends' everyday lives. That's what the Sims is for. also it's entirely understandable. You know how many fucking Skyrim sex mods are out there, dude, bro. Bruh. They no. actually create like there's like so what it, yeah they use those mods and then they post those videos on like X videos and stuff like that. Of course. <laughs> As hentai. I mean, technically is. I mean, it counts, I guess. Oh, and let me, let me be. Let me be. It counts, I guess. Easy segue and from easy segue from hentai. Uh. Also, this easy year, segue from, easy segue from it, we got um, Resident Evil Village. <laughs> we had Resident Evil Village uh, come out this year, oh. and, uh, last year, and uh, everyone fell in love with Lady D. That was the most pleasant experience. Even though she was trying to kill me the entire time, and I could not 
be within her presence so long because she would try to kill me. It it was the most pleasant experience of the entirety of the game. Up I'm until a, she transformed. I, I'm going to let y'all rock out because um, my, my heart... Y'all so masochist, for real. My, my, my horror, my horror, my horror movie Negro senses were tingling, and I'm just like, nope, not trusting it. Don't care. Nope. It's a white nope. woman. You, you know you can't trust it. Nope. Here's the thing. Taste, it's a very tall, she large. Taste, right <laughs> she likes to taste my blood. Nope. Here's the thing. I expected that, but I, as someone, I don't know if y'all played it. I don't know if y'all finished it, but as someone who has played it. And when I finished it, the rest of the trauma-inducing shit in there far exceeds Lady D becoming, uh, turning into some gorish monster. She ain't even some gorish monster. She's a really big, nasty-looking one. There are some ugly You're shit. You're talking about the fetus. Game. I'm talking about the fetus, them creepy-ass dolls, the fucking lichens, the nickel with the hammer. Dear God. The Lycan leader, <laughs> but I—I I mean, I thought I—I I thought Resident Evil Village was a very, very good, fun game. Uh, not as scary as, not as scary as a, as seven. No, but still fun because seven. I thought seven, seven wasn't was scary though. Have you watched? Okay, then. Is it is it just like Dead Space Three? Um, no, because Dead Space Three oh, or like two, or was it? Yeah, two that was like much. And uh, well, Resident Evil Seven took well, mind you, they it was not an action game. It it really went back to survival horror. You had finite amount of supplies. The Baker family, it was all, it was the first time the game was in first person point of view. And I mean, these dudes were coming out the wall. Fucking yo. When See, yo, stuff when like that yo. would just not be for me. I can't, I can't do that. I can't. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and I just realized how, uh, how, I was like, did you play seven? Absolutely huh? not. Huh? I did not. Yeah. So how so, so, y'all so know like, I don't do horror games at all. Right. So how you how you, how you even gonna really say how you even gonna say it's not scary? I'm like, Cause, cause, it no, because Babe said no, Babe said that it's four was, was scarier than seven. Yo, there's something about a like a six near seven foot man walking through a wall just to manhandle you with ease. Set fear in my god. That's a little bit too close to real. I can visualize someone that big doing shit. Four was more action packed and scary. Seven was literally bare, bare, bare minimum to what the fight back. In closed spaces, crotch goblins. Crotch goblins. <laughs> crotch goblins? What the fuck is that? One of the family members literally. And I ain't like, talking about kids. One of the one of the bosses you have to fight literally is like like an insect, and uh, she lifts up her skirt, and there's a locust horde where her parts would be and you have to set it on fire crotch goblin disgusting <laughs> disgusting that's all i gotta say it's disgusting oh one thing i will say though this past year is that you know queen Nick, I, me i have uh well i made affiliate number one and then number two, I actually got a chance to play one of the, and what, in my opinion, one of the greatest sci-fi games ever, ever made. Mass Effect. Period. I don't care what nobody says. Space travel. If you love space travel, you like sci-fi. 
this is a game for you. I implore you. I am in seven all day, Captain Shepard. Okay, Commander Shepard, all day. Okay, Somebody like that is that's my guy. That's what we doing. I'm you know glad. Mean? Like, I, I'm. I'm glad you finally caught up with everybody else. Telling y'all, uh, cosplaying my version of Captain uh, of Commander Shepard. <laughs> Uh, I just keep what did you say, Corey? Because I, I, I didn't I'm, hear that. I'm glad you caught up with everyone else. It's like the Internet Explorer of nerd. <laughs> yeah. Fuck Shit. you, okay? I'm not like, I, <laughs> know, I wasn't Legendary saying it. Was better. I wasn't <laughs> saying that to disparage. Legendary I wasn't was saying better, that to disparage you in any way. Sorry, because they streamlined a lot of bullshit that people hated in the, in, in the originals. So... Fuck all you. you. Okay. He he Love. wants to stop calling me the Internet Explorer of Nerddom. Yeah. I am not that <laughs> thing. Yo! That's messed up. <laughs> yo! That, yo. Love you. You know, yo, as funny as that is, you are not allowed. To sell j jokes like that. Why? <laughs> you got something to say, Gator? I did not appreciate how funny that joke was. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nico. Love you. Shit. Shit. Oh man! So in other news, <laughs> in other news, uh... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Come back! She's Don't like... leave! <laughs> Y'all are Don't fucking leave. terrible. <laughs> You're the one that said it. I didn't say that shit. Engine said that shit. No, he, he did not call you the Internet Explorer. Oh, no, I, I, I definitely did. He absolutely you didn't hear it did. The first time. You didn't hear it the first time. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's horrible. I do not. That's Put him to it, buddy. That's fucked up. I'm, uh. Ain't it? So fucked up. Love so, you. That's fucked up. That is, that, yo. No, you don't. Not, you don't love me, nigga. That I love you. That's funny. Not it's have true. Been <laughs> that that's what that was. That's what that that's what that is. I. What else? I'm not making better fun late of, than never, hoes. Look, I'm not making fun of you for being nerdy. I'm nerdy. I'm just making fun of you. Be late on the <laughs> That's because she was out there hanging with all the other cool kids doing cool shit. We're the cool kids now. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. And, and other news that happened uh, um, in 2021 Last of Us 2 came out. And, well, I think we should start with the Last of Us 2 leak. Because uh, cause, uh, the spoilers for it were leaked, what, I want to say two months before it came out, Engine? Yeah. Yeah, about two months. Yeah. The, uh, the leaks for it were spilled onto the internet a few months before it came out. And, now, and we all knew that Joel was catching a big one. He was catching a... He was catching a golf club to the face by a, a by a diesel transgender character. And of course the very masculine sector of gaming was uh rustled. Guess that's a good way to put it. Oh my god. What? 
Oh, then they just need to chill out. It's not all about y'all. Yeah. But on, I mean, but you know, me personally, I I didn't care. Uh, Last of Us has a good story, which is currently, I think they just wrapped up filming for the actual show. So uh, I look forward to seeing that on HBO. Uh, I don't. It, it's another horror one, so I wouldn't expect Nico to play the game, but I think she would probably enjoy the show. I mean, Last of Us isn't that much horror. Yeah, Nigga, I heard that lying. they were coming out with an HBO yeah. um, show for Last of Us too. I watched the gameplay for it, and on um, like somebody was playing Grounded. Oh, Grounded. And huh? Hun- honey, I sh- there. It's like the. It's basically like the, the hardcore. Right. It's basically uh, like the hardcore, the hard hardest core that you could play on, hardest difficulty you could play on without getting hit not once. They were more than likely just, you know, trying to, you know, show off. But it was pretty, it was pretty impressive. And for me, like, I was like, oh, like I was told, you know, that's a third person game that I might definitely enjoy. But for me, I don't really, I don't do zombies. And then on top of that, having to deal with a uh, freaking having to deal with uh not only do you have to deal with zombies but then you got to deal with regular ass people too that's a lot yeah and then on top of that in, in the yeah, grounded the cl- mode you, you the can't clickers. like there's no there's no like there's no thingy on there to like you know the the, the aim join and tell you like where your shot is going mm-hmm. there's nothing there for that there's nothing mm-hmm. there for that it's interesting I don't got time for moves like that. I don't. I'll play something on like hard, <laughs> but like moves like that, I don't got time. That's like the critical run with no experience, so you stuck at level one through the entire team. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I don't. I don't need it. It's a whole another level of masochism you have to deal with. You up. I can deal with the occasional horror game. I can't deal with, like, trying to get a perfect run on some bullshit-ass, hard-ass difficulty. Nah. I always told y'all, I, I play games to relax. If anything's gonna give me anxiety, I don't need to be playing that shit. Fuck out of here. I will always take the casual and or easy mode if they got it. Or, or and, I'm I'm here. Cheap, and I'm cheap. <coughs> I don't go fuck. I'm here to get. I'm here to get the experience. I'm here to get my heart pumping and actually do some challenging shit. I'm not here to be mentally and physically abused. Reason why I don't play Dark Souls. <laughs> uh, another, and somebody else tried to tell me I gaming. should play that too, and I'm like, "Fuck out of here!" Wow, that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> Yo. People be setting you up to scare you. They, they uh, try I have, it, but I, I don't be playing that shit. Mm-mm. I, I did I have start a... Detroit becoming human, though. Oh, no, Detroit becoming human's fine. I I will have I have a bit of like. And I've been playing moves. Dragon Age Inquisition. From last yeah, year, are... it kind of just happened. As of like a few weeks ago, but it's on the Destiny end. Speaking of like hard difficulties. Destiny had released a new 30th uh, anniversary pack. I, I'm sorry. Excuse me, what? Yeah, this is towards the end. This is December. How did Destiny have a 30th anniversary? Bungie had a 30th anniversary. Oh, okay. It was you a Destiny what? event. My bad, my bad. <laughs> it was a Destiny event. Bungie had a 30th anniversary. And normally, as a new player, a new light, you start off the game your ghost be talking to you. You get you get the introduction, the movements, the firing. You get shown how the dynamic works where super dark spots. Your ghost will actually come out and shine the light for you. Mm-hmm. Other than that, your ghost is not around, so that little motherfucker doesn't go kaput and you be on your last life. But you're supposed to learn the game. Yeah. What happened during the anniversary Jeez. event, they had this activity 
uh, called Dares of Eternity, and it immediately snatched you into it when you turned on the game. So oh. brand new people hopped on Destiny, got pulled into an event that they were under leveled for, because the base level was like twelve fifty. New lights are somewhere around ten to eleven hundred hmm. in power. So that type of disparity you don't even see in the wow. end game content, which is the harder stuff in the game. So you don't see that type of disparity in it. And they just got thrown into the wolves against the rock. There's people who have been stuck That's in that up. mode. There's people who've been stuck in that mode since the event started. I mean, is this still a thing? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, That's so, so they started the game and immediately got put on Dark Souls. Wait, thing. wait. Engine, for clarity. What what level are you on Destiny? Power level is thirteen fifty. My season pass level is like two hundred something. Oh, okay. You see when the levels are shown, oh, okay. they show the season pass level when you look at another character. And when it's one, you it's one thing you got on basic mm-hmm. gear. You just started. Everything you have is all white and common. You were about to get touched. And I mean, touched. They couldn't even. I've seen. I went in there, decreased my power, went into a match to help people out. I went in there and just saw them getting slaughtered. So I'm talking spawn dead. Spawn. I thought I was looking at some bots. Play it. That's how bad it was. Horrible. Oh, uh, it was it was sad and hilarious at the same time. <laughs> I I only helped a few. Now, <laughs> now there's one thing that definitely happened uh, in 2021. Uh, 35th anniversary for Mario. Did like and. Definitely makes me feel old as shit. <laughs> Could you go on? Like, <laughs> yeah, pretty much a 35th anniversary for Super Mario, and I'm like, geez, that's horrible. Now and now he's got a movie, got a movie coming out being played by Chris Pratt, and apparently the whole internet was upset over that last year. <laughs> Oh, just Did y'all just think- say Chris Pratt is playing Mario? Yes, he will be the voice of Mario in the Super Mario Brothers animated movie. It's being produced but by... Or He just better not sound like Chris Pratt. That's all I'm going to say. Here's the thing. Yes, we know that Mario has some type of voice, but like the main voice of Mar- Mario... Has never said, really said officially any lines. Like my man, Mario. like he aside said from one his name, words, ah. one or two words and random sounds. That's all he does across all of that. Like all of one. What? What? Like that's all. It's a me, Mario. That yeah. that's all he has ever said. I mean, you have they have Jack. It's good. Jack Black is going to be playing Bowser. It's a it's a it's a. Which I'm okay study. with. I'm okay it's with Bowser having a cast. voice because we only heard grunts from him in most things. And and of course, um, of course, Miyamoto, the creator of Mario. Has uh he's had complete creative control over the entire production, because um, let's just say after that one Super Mario Brothers movie back in the nineties, they've never trust movie makers ever again. We don't. So this is their first. This is literally 
their first time. I don't blame them. I don't blame you don't them. Don't mention they, that. They, they they be on some other stuff like completely. So I don't blame them not trust the movie makers with it because they always try to Americanize shit, which is so annoying. It's super annoying. Well, I don't know. It, it's a very awkward thing when you say Americanize and Mario Brothers because it was they made Mario while they were living in America. Yeah, sure. But at the end of the day, what what I'm saying by Americanize, I'm oh, sorry, I, Westernize. There we go. I got you. It's it's the Westernization of, of, of shit from, you know, games, anime, and stuff like that, where they just ruin shit. Look at Dragon Ball Z, fucking um, Avatar. Um, wait, wait, are you, you mean Dragon Ball Evolution? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, no. Box, Avatar. Box. Well, no, Ava, Avatar was Avatar is American. Airbender. Avatar is American. And they still fucked that up. And they still <laughs> fucked it up. That was Nickelodeon's issue. That was either way. They still literally. fucked it up. Again, westernized. Even though, know, yes, it might have been created by somebody in the US, it was based on characters that were not in the US. Yes, but it was like the creators are very American. Okay, sure. Fine. The I'll give you that. But how the fuck American. did you, how did you fuck that but up? The even story. That? It has diverse people that you can... Because Paramount Studios, <sighs> the folks above Nickelodeon, kept interfering. And that's my point, that westernization. Yeah. It's not just, it's not, like, I'm not just talking about, oh, you know, the, the weird ass, you know, westernization as far as the culture they try to put on it or whatever, when they try to, like, leave their mark on shit, when they take stuff from the East. But I'm talking about even that, though. The fact that Paramount kept interfering with the shit and then turned it into pretty much something that none of the fans fucking recognized as anything from the original material, really. Like other a movie. Than the names. About, like a movie about Egypt. Got nothing but white people. I mean, shit. You had, you had an Egyptian movie about Egyptians and had nothing but white people for, for the leads. Yep. But you had all the colored motherfuckers in every other supporting role. Including Chadwick Boseman, R.I.P. Chadwick. Oh, R.I.P. Chadwick. We love him. Wakanda forever. He Wakanda forever! Right. He but, will always be Black Panther to us. But, um, which, and you know what, Nico, that brings up a very great point. Actually, it was actually one of my favorite movies of 2021. Zack Snyder's Justice League. I haven't seen it because uh, it was long. I heard it was shit. like two and a half hours it or something like good. that. No, it's four hours it's long. Four hours. Holy shit! It's four that fucking was, hours. Oh, he wanted to go for the Titanic record. Cause you remember was, when you had to rent Titanic from Blockbuster and they had to give you two tapes? Yeah, but I only watched the second tape because I was there for the crashing and the dying. You I know what? Fuck about you were that tip. You were fucking your comfort. Tip. That was your comfort scene. <laughs> Because you know why? I mean, I was just forced like, to watch like Amistad. That's just like you and Jen watching like the, the like the second to last episode of uh, Invincible. Uh, so. I, her, question: Have you watched Spider Man? No, I haven't seen it. I did watch the Matrix uh, Resurrection though. Good, good, good. I won't say much, but I have a new comfort scene, and it's in Spider Man. Oh dear God! Oh. From the window. Whoa! Whoa! Oh Lord! Oh Lord! What y'all did now? Oh. Oh, oh, I would like to tell you, but I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, okay. it, don't tell it's actually, me. It's actually, but a movie I, I really see. don't want to spoil. All right. Well, don't tell me because I actually want to see it. Um, um, but Zach, but but Zach Snyder, uh, of course, when he was filming the Justice League back in 2015, 16? 2016, yeah. uh, one of his kids passed away, and he wanted to suspend production. And Warner Brothers was like, "Fuck that! You're replaceable. We'll bring Joss Whedon in." We'll do some reshoots. It'll be fine. Joss Whedon looks at the script and is just like, um... I'm not touching it. <laughs> there's a lot that needs to be done here. 
fuck that. Rewrite it. The movie can't be longer than two hours. Uh, okay. But what about Henry Cavill's mustache? CGI that shit. Ew. Ew. Yo. That, uh, speaking yo. of Henry Cavill. He's winning. He is definitely winning. Um, he, of course, he can't like his um, Netflix came out with the second season of The Witcher this past December. Um, I watched the whole season. Have you guys seen it? I am a few episodes away because I've been watching it in an episodic pace. I've seen okay. like two episodes, I think. It is it is really good. Um, one of the things I will say, like when you're even starting the series at, at all, I would suggest you definitely pay attention. It's one of those uh, series where like you literally have to pay attention to everything that's going on mm-hmm. because they kind of jump around in time. Yep. And you don't realize that they're jumping around in time until you do. You know what I mean? Or unless somebody tells you that they're jumping around in time. But um it's it's really great one of the things that i did notice um that was noted from one of the biggest fanboys of that series um (laughs) was that his weapon kind of changed from season one to season two because he kept getting he kept getting uh his hand kept getting caught when he was trying to do certain uh scenes and things of that nature so they had to kind of like tilt and like kind of like bend the the ends of the blade up a little bit um near the hilt to kind of mm-hmm. like make it a little easier on him to be able to uh, maneuver and do all the things that he needed to do as as Geralt. Mm-hmm. And that was just really, really enjoyable. It was definitely very enjoyable to watch, definitely very interesting. Um, the main villain in, in the story was not an actual villain that actually existed in the books. This was something they created. And um, so to see that, you know come to fruition they did a really great job they did change some things around but um everything that they did that they changed wasn't wasn't all that terrible wasn't all that bad at, at all actually um like i said i quite quite very much enjoyed it and everything so um it's very cool <coughs> and apparently now they just came out with a collaboration with netflix king vader netflix collaboration with the witcher the story of kane is now on youtube oh it's the first black witcher the story of kane he's the first black witcher and this is available on youtube <coughs> every time i try to watch yeah Richard, he made that king vader thinking. made it via the netflix dreams project I keep oh just that's thinking. fantastic superman yeah. with an affinity so for that's magic. available on the uh on youtube um so i would definitely check that out um you know the witcher the story of Cain. so he would be the first black witcher it's very very interesting um, I'm definitely gonna have to dig more deeply into this. It's funny to find it, out more. It's funny you say that because um, at PAX Unplugged, I was speaking to the company behind the Witcher tabletop game, as well as the site. Talking about CDPR? No, they no uh, PD. They they specifically do the video game. Oh, okay. CDPR there's another does company. The game. There's a there's another company that does the tabletops. Our Tulsarian. Mm-hmm. But they, but mind you, they all communicate with each other to put out good products. Right. And he was saying how their next expansion for The Witcher takes uh takes you in, into the southern region where there where it's going to be warmer and by and by default they're going to be more witches of color because their 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 media their their PR manager was like, listen, the the creation of this may. It, it all took place up north. A lot of people of color weren't thought of back then. It, it, it's no, no one was trying to be racist. It's just how it's just how the world was thought of in that. You talking about uh, with the Witcher? Yeah, like the casting and everything. I mean, well, I no, definitely not. He, he's not speaking on the he's show. He's talking about the table. He's just speaking game. on the table. Well, the the game world in general, when yeah. it was designed. Look, I mean, look at the region it was coming from. No one right. was thinking. <laughs> it's it was not like, like we don't do cold. We we don't like, really do cold. We are not really like a, 
you know, snow mountainy, like snow mountains and glaciers and shit kind of people. Like that's that was never that was never our area that we thrived in. We always thrived in a warmer climate. Always. We are equator people. Exactly. We are definitely equator people. So um I think that they're I don't know. Me personally, like even in even in the show or whatever, like initially I was wondering, like, all right, where the black people at though? But then I started thinking about what time period this was and like where this was, and mm-hmm. it's like, ah, that actually kind of makes more sense. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not upset, and even and even and here's the thing though, they definitely did try to add a little more diversity in the story anyway with their casting. Yeah, like the pretty motherfucker from uh, Marco Polo. Uh, yeah, you know, y'all know who I'm talking about. Yes, I know who you're talking mm-hmm. about. The pretty motherfucker. They got and him you, as Wilgerforce. And I'm just like, and I'm just like, wait, when did you see? I was like, when did you see Marco Polo? This year. That yeah, that's what I was like. I <laughs> yep, I watched the whole all, all all three seasons this year, or no, two. It was two, right? It was two. Yeah, it was two. I watched uh, that and Into the Badlands. That was another really good one. That was three seasons, though, and that was really great. Honestly, I wish they would have kept going with both of those because those were really, really great stories that were developed very, very well. You know, but not enough um, people was watching Marco Polo to compensate for that. Uh, that that how much they were spending. Budget. I mean, yeah. but they definitely. You know what's crazy though? They started with uh, Marco Polo is technically a spinoff from the original that they started which was, was the story of a hundred eyes mm-hmm. no they, they started they made they made they made the hundred eyes short like somewhere between one and two mm, okay between season one and two yeah they they made that nice little short well that that was perfect to me like that was great to give him a good backstory and whatnot because it's like i, I know a lot of people are probably wondering like how the hell is this blind motherfucker just beating the brakes off of every nigga with two eyes like it doesn't make sense and why is he still you know working with Kublai after all of this and you know there's a lot there um Mm -hmm. so there was so much story there so much history there um it's very interesting uh ironically because you know a lot of that had to do with the Mongol and the uh Song Dynasty um Ironically, I saw and watched Bling Empire after that, which featured one of the wives of one of the, like the, um, the, I guess the, the 24th heir of the Song Dynasty, mm-hmm. um, which was even more interesting. So like to see her struggles and the things that she went through within the family, within that family itself, is not surprising given what we've already kind of like yeah like the way they kind of depicted the story already in marco polo because even though that that was you know historical fiction you know with some there's still some there's still some actual facts being thrown around right there are actual facts that are there which was interesting and like there was so many questions they left unanswered for this second at the end of that second season i was so upset I was yeah. so upset. I was like, no, you got to be kidding how, me. You got to be kidding you, me. How do you think I felt at the end of the get down? Yeah, that one too. That one too. Like, I was upset that they canceled that because everybody was watching that though. Like, that was, that actually was popular. Not but, enough. That, that, that was, the problem was, it was a lot of people in our culture watching it and not everyone else's culture. Yeah, I guess. It, it's it's just annoying though, cause like here's the because, thing though, because, when it's corny or, or when it's lame or or when it when it's centered around you know uh the palm colored folk, mm-hmm. you know, and nobody cares, they'll they'll keep it going for X amount of seasons, but, but let it I be mean, some shit that the colored folks like, or the folks of color like. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh well, we're spending way too much money on this. Oh, but you ain't trying to do budget cuts on New Girl or any of the other shows. And I know New Girl wasn't something that Netflix themselves produced, but yeah. that was just an example of a dumbass show but that what? really did not need as many seasons as it got. But I'd say, uh, but I'd say Cowboy Bebop 
had 75 million uh, individual account views. And it exactly. still got cut. My point. When it's stories that are not around, based around their their people, it, it's so easy to just... I it. can't say that because there are also shows I will say where the, they're the, the main Cowboy character Bebop as well. Went left the way it did was because of um, the fans. Yeah, the fans ruined that shit. Actually, to be fair, on that had, on that one you, in particular, you, you had you had you had dumbass fans who were like, "If it's not just like the anime, it's gonna suck." Even though the creator was like, "We're not making this just like the anime. We're gonna we're gonna change a few things around." I'm like I'm like I'm like y'all argument is null and void. They, they already said from upset. the beginning. They were more upset at the fact that Faye wasn't like scantily clad. Yeah, than, like, like what the hell was wrong with y'all? Well, you know, is what 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 from what I've been told, it's called fan service, and they felt like they didn't get their fan service. <coughs> That's because you're in the you're older now. Grow the fuck up. You know, they'll never do that. Yeah, you know, they'll oh. never do that. And and I think I think John Cho and Mustafa did great as Jet Black and uh and Spike. They I, I think they captured them perfectly. Is that just me to just hear Corey like kind of like voice kind of like being weird? Is that mm -hmm. just me? Hello. What? Do you hear that? Yeah, you sound like. A robot, you're... like a transformer. That's, yeah, like you're talking to like. a fucking fan. Jesus. Yeah, y'all sound oh, like that. transformers right now. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a leave a couple. She's down. a, she's a goddamn Decepticon. I knew it. Mm. She's a goddamn Decepticon. I knew it. <laughs> Too damn pretty. Too damn pretty to hang out with. Shut your ass up. Too damn pretty. How about but, now? Um, Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. All right. But uh oh wow, last year it was you, Corey. Now I'm stuck in 2021. No, see, you're in Florida, so you know that's just a roll of the dice. Wait, let me tell you how I asked Siri like when 20 when when 2022 was, and didn't this bitch respond 364 days from now? I took a picture of it this time. So motherfuckers would think I'm crazy. Listen, I had to. Listen, you're talking to a person who talks to who talks to Siri like like it's people. <laughs> but, uh, all right, hey, you know what? We got to talk about. We we do have to talk about this one here. We have to. We have to. Engine. We got to. What am I? What am I? Favorite things from 2021. Abba and Preach versus Fresh and Fit. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Because, was because I Abba shows. and Preach are nerds. Yep. They really are. There are people. We understand. Like, and Fresh and Fit are fake jocks. Like they're not even jocks. Yeah. They're fake no, jocks. They they like to act like they they were popular in high school. Those are the dudes that weren't really popular that that popular in high school. Like they tried to pretend to be cool with the popular kids and whatnot, but the popular kids were like, "We'll fuck with you." Those are the people. Those are the guys that would lie to the popular kids so that they would they would accept them. Who was looking for approval from the popular kids and shit? Like those are very some very very hurt men. Yo, for those who don't know, I've been preached. They're a YouTube, uh, they're their YouTube Duo. channel, and they're also uh, and stand up them. comedians. Um, they do some reaction videos, and they also just uh, they talk about their thoughts and feelings on certain on topics. Yep. And Fresh and Fit is a is a uh, YouTube channel and podcast that started, I want to say, in early early twenty twenty one. I want to say they. I say I want to say they start in, in, in either early 2021 or late 2020. They started. But, like, they started last year. They haven't been around that long. 
Of course, yeah. I haven't been around that long because nobody want to hear that bullshit. Like, no, and the only, well, that's only, a, what, what, the only reason well, why they are well, no, well, is because they're on that bullshit. Yeah, I'm about to say. Now here's now here's the weird part. They try to pose as a a channel that's about fitness and teaching financial stability, right? They'll have a few videos on it. Well, all but they do that's is bash women. Well, no, hold on. Let, let me get to that. They'll, they'll they'll have videos about like financial stuff and how to stay fit and fit. And fit. But that but when you look at the views on those videos, they're peanuts compared to the video of them where they're at, where it's later at night and they're surrounded by other women in Miami, all in Instagram influencers and things like that. And they try this Round table woman hater, weird, weird alpha macho machismo shit. And they try to come off as the smartest guys in the room because they're, they're, they have very misleading conversations with these women. And a lot of times when the women say things that they don't like, uh, one of them, Myron, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Fit or Fresh, one of them, mm-hmm. the one that has the, the fading hair. The one that oh, has the balding the in the middle? He's balding yes. in the middle? Mm-hmm, the that one that's one. balding in the middle. Who be on seeking arrangements? He 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 calls it going into Frank Castle mode and kicking the women out, and I'm just like, you're the really first hyped video about throwing women out. Premiered on May eighth, twenty twenty. Oh, okay. So all right, twenty twenty. Two years. So they they didn't even been there a whole two years though. Right. They've been on there a whole two years. So I guarantee you, a lot of this came from the them watching. Like they were emboldened by who? Kevin Samuels. But here's but all right now here's a weird thing and and to be fair Kevin Samuels didn't start out that way. He did. Here's a, and here's the thing. I'm going to defend Kevin Samuels to a certain extent. Kevin Samuels has been keeping the same energy with men and women. No, I, I again, I that's what I'm saying. Like I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that he's a woman basher, but no no no. They took his message. A lot of these motherfuckers out here have took his message of the shit that he be saying to women, not realizing that he is applying it to both sexes and uh have felt emboldened to just bash women because of the way Kevin has gone about um carrying his his show now because before he was getting in on the dudes and going in on the dudes just as much as the girls and whatnot and and trying to actually help people like that was the intention and you you could tell that but the problem of it is is that now all of a sudden because you know him being just disrespectful just gets him views you know like why are you coming at this woman for wearing a bonnet it's late at night and she's probably ready to go to bed but just wanted to come on to have a conversation yeah. like this is social media this is not a job interview this is nothing professional you might be dressed up in your living room or whatever with your little suit on or whatever but like who said she has to you are but, no one special for her so she's not but, she doesn't feel the need to impress you but the th- uh but the pro- the problem is even before he turned it, it it started turning that way kevin samuels was trying to better people but uh, fresh and fit and a lot of dudes with that mentality they just hurt they they made they made they they became monsters and these are definitely like like it's one of those things where technically Kevin Samuels was doing good but he was he made, trying to do good he made so many monsters good. in the process it's like nigga maybe you shouldn't do it at all well, no, it, that, like honestly, fresh and fit at this point. Why don't y'all just say y'all like men? I mean, no, they like women. They just also they don't know how to talk to women. They, That's my uh, point. Like, no, you clearly they, don't like women because you're not even trying to take the time to learn how to talk to women. You don't even want to take the time to actually correct yourself or even learn anything better or new to better yourself. What kills me is how do you come at sex workers? then hit up sex workers on websites 
That's what that like that's what that's what I never understood. Yeah, it's weird. Well, I, that's I, the, that's the one thing. That's how him like them and Kevin Samuels will differ though. Kevin Samuels was like, listen, I will pay an escort. Even if I'm just paying for her time. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Because she knows how to handle herself like a professional. Mm-hmm. So I ain't got to worry about it. And 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 I think that that's where uh, Abin preached. And that's that's where they got, they started to butt heads when they were talking about that. Like, no, if you want somebody to be subservient to you, this, this, and this, in this way to you, you probably more than likely are going to have to pay for that. You don't want to yep. hear the truth, but it is the truth. These are facts. So it's like, what is your problem, sir? And you know? they, and it's funny because every once in a like every once in a while they'll, they'll they'll bring on a bunch of people and also have everybody drinking. So you know that they, they want they want people to act act out. Mm-hmm. Like so, and uh, to every be once fair, in a while though, they in get, terms of that, like you don't have to drink if you don't want to. True. You know what I mean, but, like, you but, know what I mean, and you know, you know where you at. If you know where you at, you should know better. But here's where things get really slimy with them, and this was revealed this year between their, the, between the beef they had with Abba and Preach, because mm-hmm. um, apparently the one with the the one with the fading hair, he inboxes he inboxes women to be guests. And then tries to get them to sleep with him to be on the show. Wow. And when they got called out about it, they tried to hit their audience with a razzle dazzle. It was like, no, but this is how you hook up with these chicks. You gotta hit, you gotta come at them like this. It's like, no, 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 you don't. It's like, this is why now a lot of people just watch y'all for entertainment. It's like no one takes notes from you guys. But I think it's gotten to a point where maybe people should just stop watching in general. Yeah. They keep up with all these copyright strikes like they have been. Oh man. They go they're not gonna have a chance. (laughs) Well yo. Oh, um they first off, all the bullshit that goes down with them, a lot of people report on it. And the last one was when um was when, what is it? Fit, I guess. Fresh for the the one fresh of them one. Yeah, he was talking about how um, he has a girl and she loves him for him, but they met on seeking arrangements. Sure, and then she loves you for you. And then and, and DJ Academics was there and he was like, so he was like, so how did y'all meet? He was like, we met online, we talked for a bit. I would ask her out and she kept saying no. But then one night I asked her out and we were going on a yacht and she she showed up. He was like, oh, so she showed up when you mentioned the yacht, huh? <laughs> oh, it's just wild. Congratulations. But, you played yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you got called out for being simping. For simping. Uh, and then the other one, it's like, bro, just say you hate, you really hate women that have opinions. I'm Basically. telling you, yo, if you see, if you read this, like, yo, Evan Preach read these motherfuckers seeking a range of its profile, and that oh, no. shit was laughable. Man, all laughable. Of a sudden, what cracked, copyright strike after copyright strike. But what cracked me up was when, when they was taught, when he, when he said, he would beat he would beat preach the fuck up and preach was like name Let's the go. Top of the set, place. It up. set it up and i like i would love to see that but i noticed that none of them none of them want to say nothing after that yeah like and, and, and preach came with the receipts none of them want the smoke none they of them don't it. really want the smoke they're not really ready for the smoke for real not for real for real but one like it it just dawns on me that especially with how we are here, I want to put I want to put so much emphasis on, especially when we bring up news and stuff. 
we want to keep our integrity. And because every I, every time I see them and I and I see the dumb shit they do, I just try to remember to stay humble, work on the work on the facts. Try uh, no need to sandbag people you're interviewing. I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 just weird. They got a whole lot of weird energy and I don't like it. Um, to be honest with you, I'm pretty almost I'm almost certain at this point that they are closeted gay men who just hate women. You gotta but be. I mean they in Miami. That's you I mean that's, that's not surprising. That's so. not I mean it's a perfect place to be out and proud. Hey man, clearly they don't feel that way because you know how it is in our communities in certain places. And spaces with our this, this Miami, it's a community for everybody. I'm sure there is, but all I'm saying is, as far as the black community is concerned, you know how it gets real weird when it comes to LGBTQ. First off, I don't think these dudes hold are on. of the hold on, I don't think these dudes are of the culture in any way, shape, or form. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Despite Where's Miami their skin again? Tone, Florida. Yeah, that's right. The only place where you can be both classy and bougie and trashy while doing cocaine. Yeah, they just, 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 doing cocaine. just by how they just by how they talk to that's women, so especially black women, they are not of the culture. Yeah, I They're, I must agree. Yeah, it's weird. So, and then on top so, of that, like they like to spice shit like instead of directly quoting shit like how you post a video or a clip of you know an exchange you had between people and then you write in your story misquoting the fucking video that you posted how does that work how does that work I don't know especially one video where he said he owned somebody he owned someone there but when you watch it it's like no she actually owned you You know, oh, wait, are we not all watching of that is the ego. Same a lot of them listen, I want to see if these motherfuckers are still saying the same shit in the next five to ten years. I don't know if they have a career in the next five to ten That's years. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If somebody don't don't not either knock their head off their shoulders and or um you know put them on a shirt, I'll and the funniest I wonder thing if is they'll still have the same opinions. And the funniest thing is they they remind me they remind me of an uh they they had they they built so many bad relationships in their finite amount of time and i find that so strange because i'm like wait that's not strange these, come on come i'm on. like all these people work well I'm, I'm being sarcastic i'm like all these people used to work with y'all and now all of a sudden they're enemies and i'm just like huh hmm you know who I would love to have on the show though, Ab and Preach. I would lo- I, like that would be so great. I, I would, would love to. Honestly, I think we should probably reach out to them and see I'm if they try. want to do like a Zoom or even come on like Streamyard to do like interviews. Um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Nico, you gonna try? I'm gonna try. Well, listen, I can't do it directly because I tried to shoot my shot with Abba already and oh. failed miserably. It was an air ball, my guy. Mm. I got curved. In a nice way. But I definitely oh, got curved. At least. At so least I can't wasn't... do it. I can't do it. You'd reach out to it. preach then, at least. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. Because then he's going to be like, yo, that's the girl that I curved. Uh-uh. Fair uh-uh. Enough. Nope. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want any type of like, oh, you did this just to try to get close to me type. No, uh-uh. Mm-mm. I'd rather someone else from, from, from the junkies okay. Okay. reach okay. out that way. There's no fun. They, they, they don't feel like there's no funniness. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I can see how that could be seen as, oh, you, 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 you want some weird shit. No, 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 no. I will allow the powers that be to, to do so, you know, without me my input because <laughs> i was trying to shoot my shot with him personally but if i e- even if i you know try to switch it around now it's it's, it's just too late you know okay. i probably should have started with that so <laughs> you know that's on me um this is a pretty long episode for our first episode back it's our first time back that's why 
Yeah, we've missed you guys. We missed you guys. I've missed y'all, of course. Aww, and, we uh, miss you too. Missed you. Oh, um, I miss y'all lots. This guy. But um, but yeah, you know, like honestly, I feel like the worst movie of 2021 though was probably Matrix Resurrection. Uh, I'm out. gonna disagree. I don't miss you there. anymore. Get out. Yeah, I'm gonna. It wasn't... Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm it gonna disagree been with you. Okay, you could disagree. That's fine. That's your opinion. What do you yeah. feel like was the worst movie of 2021? Man, worst. Yeah, mm. there is a lot. Like, like that was the thing. That, that it was a it was a good couple of them too. <laughs> All right, which ones? Uh, um, Name three. Um, <laughs> Red Notice. Um, okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. I forgot. I forgot about that one. See? It was so bad, I forgot it. Yeah. Red Notice, Snake Eyes, um, The Last Duel. I didn't see that one. Fa um, so Fast Nine. Didn't see that. Resident one. Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Didn't uh, see that one. Either. Yeah, like. <laughs> uh, I mean, oh Red, when you said Red Notice, I was like, oh, geez, I forgot about that one. Jeez. Yeah, I, you know and why the funny I'm thing so is with the Matrix Resurrection is because it, that was the last thing I probably had yeah. seen recently. But Venom. I was utter, like, it was, it was a, just a weird, like, it's all, it was almost like watching someone make a Facebook status about how awesome they were back in the day and then like the status. The, the, but the, but the cardinal worst film of 20, uh, of 2021 is Space Jam. Uh -huh. Space Jam. I haven't seen it, down. so I can't say that I agree, but I do trust oh, your opinion when it gee, comes to that one. Rhythm. <laughs> Yeah, Space Jam, the new legacy is hands down one of the best worst films. best movie of twenty twenty one. Best movie. Best movie. Uh, the way home. <laughs> I'm not uh, <laughs> for the ass uh, alone. The way home. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say nobody, cause uh, cause that. That to me, that was that still might be one of my favorite my favorite movies of last year. Nobody, because mm -hmm. I honestly did expect it to be that 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 crazy of a ride, but it was. Um, mm -hmm. Spider Man: No Way Home, and I've got to give I've got to give Ryan Reynolds his credit at least once this year. Free Guy. Mm. Okay. All right. And um, best TV show. I vote Squid Game. Um, uh, can't really argue Squid Game, but you say Squid Game, I'll say Wandavision. That was good. Um. I don't know though. It was good, but <laughs> I have a gripes with it. It's, it was it's mainly about Wanda as a character, though. It's a it's a toss up. Not really about the Arcane story. And Ooh. Hit Monkey. Yo, and the funny thing is, I wasn't sure. I was like, you wasn't, I wasn't, you wasn't expecting it to hit like that. What? Are you yo, Hit Monkey. Hit, hit Monkey hit way harder than expected. Right. It hit way harder than expected. He's not expecting that. That shit. I, I ain't gonna get no spoilers, but yo, if you haven't seen Hit Monkey, yeah, definitely go watch Hit Monkey. Oh, you know, know what? No, I changed my mind. My top top way of the house husband. Hello. Of course. Nigga, you could have put yourself okay. on mute for that. Sorry guys, uh, I got uh, I gotta go. 
my food my food is here all right and so it's about time for us to go we want to thank you guys for <laughs> we want to thank you guys for listening in today and i feel like you're gonna keep that shit in there too uh, yeah mm-hmm. yes he is nico is it was, it was so good to have you here i want to see you all the time demon engine my mm-hmm. nigga okay. yeah yeah Again, we want to thank you guys for listening in today, uh, especially you guys yes, out there on YouTube. Welcome back. Happy New Year. It's good to be back. Uh, plus, if you're listening to us uh, of, as your podcast, we want to thank you again for downloading. You made last year one of our best years ever. It's time to just take it up to the next level. Just keep on doing what you do. Go to marymedia.com. Check us out. I'm Corey Salt Troop Lloyd, and I'll be out. Take us, a, take us away, Demon Engine. Follow me on queennick.org. Hi, everybody. This is Corey Salter True Floyd for Marybee Media, and I hope you enjoyed this podcast video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to check out our other videos right over here. You have a good one. See you around.